21 races and it's all led to this. The finale for season so one. To remind ourselves of our top three, who are Fettel, I can't wait. <laughs> oh my god, it's only practice and I'm so excited. I have had this emotion three times now. I don't know why I had it when I was actually doing this. When I was editing. <laughs> and now. Oh, I'm hope you're excited as I am. Oh, I can't, I can't hide it. Uh, I mean, at the moment, I've just got, I'm so excited, something stuck in my head at the moment. Anyway, interviews. Um, again, asked about other teams about from Claire. Although, this is my team, not their team, my team. It's the mode, my team. Resource points now, hopefully that will get help us improve the car as much as humanly possible. Again, Team Acclaim now. Team Acclaim level 13. Not too bad. Team Acclaim, uh, Driver Acclaimed at level 10. And um, here we are getting ready for qualifying now for the finale of Season 1. The final ever race for the season. We've had them um, up and down throughout the season. we got our first podium in Belgium. He had retirements in Bahrain. Can you believe that? All the way back in August. Bahrain had retirement. Or, I mean, Australia, our first ever race to finish 15th. Boy, have we come a long way. It's still, it's still one of the worst in um, vehicle performance, which is a little bit annoying. Um, next season, I'll have to... Make sure that I do as many of the practice programs as I can and try and get purple on them. Because otherwise I am going to be far behind. Looking at getting an aerodynamics upgrade. Because um, that's the only thing that we can do. Unfortunately if we got the upgrade it would probably um, not come on the car due to the regulation changes. So we are not going to go, go and do that. Because um, that would just waste, waste resource points. Which... Uh, could be valuable in developing the car. At the moment, we've only got a sashi upgrade that's going to come onto the car, which is a little bit annoying. But enough about the car. Let's go to qualifying for the finale of season one. One more race. Let's go. Here we are then on track. Nicholas Latifi setting a 37 free. Um, slowing down to let um, Max pass 37, uh, 35 8 from Esteban Ocon, 35 1 from Charles Leclerc, and 34 um, 9 from Ricardo, 34 8 from Lewis Hamilton. And we're going to come across the line to set our first lap. Where's it going to be? It's going to be a 35 5. Puts us P6 just behind Leclerc, but just ahead of Ocon, which is not too bad. Coming across the line for our second lap, going down on the red just a little bit, improving by three quarters of a t um, temp, and that puts us into P11. But on board for our final lap now, starting P11. Let's go across the line, we're starting our final lap now in the red at the moment. Breaking about 75 metres, going wide a little bit at turn one. Not too wide, going to want to go on the kerb, going through turn three. Get on the curb just a little bit and don't want to go on the curbs on the exit because they will throw you everywhere. 100 meters into the chicane at the end of sector one. Going through the hairpin, lifting off about um, when the curb ends on the right. Accelerating as soon as we can, going out as qualifying now ends. Opening the DRS as soon as we can and we are going towards the second chicane of the lap. Uh, 1.4 temps down at the moment, breaking about 100 meters board, go into the corner, going on the curb just a little bit on both um, parts. Don't go on the curb on the exit because that will throw you off as I learnt during the race. Going through the um, second secondary grid, slot, um, grid starting position, breaking about 100 meters, going into the corner, break, going onto the curbs, uh, the triple um, chicane, going to the left hander now, getting on the curbs 
just a little bit going towards the triple right hand and now really hard to um, get your break in correct here break in as soon as you get to the ex um, exit of the corner and um, exit of the second right hander gaining a lot of times because I think it went wide on my second lap going wide on the um, that corner there going two tenths up breaking about 50 meters or going towards the final corner for the final lap of qualifying of the season going across the line we're going to go three tenths up where is it going to put us are we going to be in the points for the beginning of the final race yes we are we're going to be starting p10 and um yeah not too bad from us um getting some xb points now um tier five at the moment um that will have jumped up from uh to the australian gp because i did a lot of um, time trial in the background um p10 for us just ahead ahead of sebastian vettel and a potential teammate for next season if you remember from last episode um out of three um no one's commented at the moment but then again i've only just released the episode so yeah um one being i won two of them starting in the top 14 and um one of them is starting in the top 14 so um basically cancelled out career no behind me actually uh starting um 19th of 136 whilst we set a 35 for one yeah, so much here. Uh, like I said, you can win this race, and you're not staying for the team. So, we are going to go to the race for the final time now. It's not. <laughs> we'll get a cookie if we win. But, um, I don't want to go to zero AI, Jeff. So no, unfortunately. Let's go to the finale, season one. Oh, I'm so excited. I was gonna say something, but I forgot. Damn it. It's the final chapter of the season then here at the spectacular Yas Marina Circuit. It's a race where the pole sitter failed to finish in three of the first four events. A front row start here is by no means a guarantee of victory, so we go into battle once more. As we get underway at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, we have 21 corners here at the Yas Marina Circuit, 12 to the left and 9 to the right. It's a total lap distance of just over 3.4 miles. There are two long back straights opening up some passing opportunities into the braking zones. And we expect average lap speeds of around 123 miles an hour. And it's an absolute pleasure to be joined once again by Anthony Davidson. Now, I want to talk to you about Valtteri Bottas. They've had a fantastic campaign. It's been a wonderful year, and they come into this weekend's Grand Prix as a fully deserving champion. I agree it's been a truly impressive season, but championship or no, I don't think they'll be gently cruising around to the finish line. In fact, with points no longer a concern, there's a lot less to risk, so we may even see a more aggressive approach. It's time to see oh, how our mm. drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting Oh, well, I don't know. I've already done it beforehand. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, Abu Dhabi, unfortunately, doesn't provide much. We have Hamilton, unfortunately, doesn't provide much battles as we got two long straights full of DRS and then you've got twisty sections afterwards, which... Um, means dirty air which means you could all be behind uh, you lose time from dirty air which means you let it because you have less downforce unfortunately our teammate getting a grid penalty so he will be starting last sebastian vettel also getting a good penalty so um three drivers that we overtook last race are our starting in the top 14 so you could be at maybe down back in the fight um, changing the strategies then, um, looking at a um, one stop from soft to mediums or a one stop from soft to hard. Um, pitting around lap 5 I think that says, yes. Changing to see if we could um, switch up the strategy, see if we can um, make it any quicker, but we can't. So we're going to stick with that um, strategy of a one stop pitting on lap 5. We can get ready for 5 lights now and they are about to go out. And they are out. Overtake button is engaged. Low, uh, lean fuel mix at the moment. Albon's got a massive start and he's already passed us into turn one. We're going to go down his inside and down the Charles de Pair's inside. He's still on the outside, but going through the exit of turn one, we're ahead. 
going through turn three now clipping the curb on the entry just a little bit looking behind us to see about all beyond um behind us we're going into the chicane now we're going to go round the outside of sergio perez and turns to the inside for the hairpin we look at having the um, inside on ocon but it doesn't quite work jeff complimenting this on our first lap um car science leads the way as um, we are chasing down ocon for p8 i've just realized um going into turn one now um yeah no um voucher by us and a 37 for seven as um car science still leads DRS is enabling, a, enabled and the pit window is going to be open soon. Um, going towards turn lap 4 and like I said, not much action. 39-1 um, on that lap. Going to turn 1 again, no nothing. Setting green sectors this time and we set a 39-1, losing it again in the final sector due to that dirty air like I said. Going through the hairpin now, and um, Ocon seems to have lost the rear end just a little bit. We've got DRS now on lap 5, our pit window lap. We're going to open DRS as he's not close enough to Lando Norris to get any DRS, so he's a sitting duck on the straights. Going to go into Chicane, he's defending it, which is quite cool. Hey, I do do that now. Going on to the second main straight now. Uh, this is what ruins the um, fighting, because look, you easily be past him. I don't even need overtaking of past him. That's how overpowered these straights are at Abby. And then you've got these twisty bits where the driver behind you just loses so much time. Going towards the triple right hander now. Um no pit lane actually. Going into pit lane with the first ones to come into the box. And then um, making sure that we go to down to the speed limit. We're going half the speed limit though. So um, could have gained a little bit more time. But can't be too cautious. Actually you can. Anyway into the box we come. Coming in for our medium tyres now. Uh, it's kind of a slow stop from the boys. 2.5 seconds. You need to speed it up just a little bit. Coming out of the pit lane now. And uh, we go under the circuit by the way. Um, yeah. Quite cool pit exit. Um... Nobuho is in the pit lane and um, coming across our line we set a purple middle sector although we weren't behind anyone and um, there you go they come out on their left there's Ricardo um, I believe he was quite far ahead of us before we pitted um, I think we no we didn't jump Sergio because we were already ahead of him going into sector 2 now we caught up to Ricardo and Max Stappen who caught up to the um, back marker of Latifi, if you could saw, see. Luckily, Latifi pits. Um, Daniel Ricciardo defending position into turn one. Don't quite work for us. Um, seem to trump London Norris, have we? Um, going down onto the first straight and um, easily going to breeze past him. Antonio Giovinazzi also hasn't pitted as Max Stappen just got past him now. And we do the same, but on Ricciardo. Carlos Sainz sent a 37-4 um, to set the fastest lap. Um, Tony Giovinazzi coming into the pit lane now. We set a 37-8, um, quite far off his um, lap time, or the 37-5 I think I said. And never home right seat is out. And that's an early end to his time at Winter Racing Team. Um, there he is, you're going to go to the off-board no smoke so it seems to be a an electrical failure so um yeah um fortunate end to Metsheeta's career at um winter racing team but none of our drivers have had quite long time but we got onto the curb and can't be drooling over Metsheeta as we got onto the curb we lost the rear end and like I told you in qualifying you don't want to get on those as now Ricardo is going round our outside into the triple chicane. We don't don't go side by side. We're going to lose the rear end again on the second part of the chicane. But we keep ahead of him. And we go on to lap 10 now. We're in P5. Jesus Christ. We're P8 before the pit stop. So we've um, got past Ricardo. So that's P6. We jumped Lando. That's P7. So um, who else did we jump? We must jump someone. Defending now from Dan Ricardo as he's got DRS and um, looks like we didn't need to defend as much as I thought. 
but then he closes in uh, rapidly towards the chicane, so I do a late move to the inside, which we shouldn't be doing. But luckily, um, as we were close to the break zone, but um, onto the second straight. Now, Danny Ricardo is going to be much closer, so maybe he's going to have a move, so we're going to defend the inside. He's going to go towards the outside now, like a carbon copy of um, the previous lap, but we don't overcook it and we don't lose the rear end this time. And we go through the um, 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 the rest of that lap. Um, Carlos Sainz still has the lead. Jesus Christ, mate, you're on fire. And that'll be his second victory, I just realised. He won in Brazil, didn't he? Um, going through the laps now. Lap 11 to 12, 38 6. Losing 7 temps. Uh, probably due to but lack of um, grip on the tyres. Um, Vatchaba is still sent first of slaps. We set a 38-4. Closing in on our fastest lap. Um, Daniel Ricciardo seems to be dropping about three tenths behind, but we lose the rear end on the final corner, so maybe that's not going to help. Checking the um, percentages of the tyres, and they seem to be fine. But going through the final um, couple of corners now, Carlos Sainz wins the Grand Prix for McLaren, for the front line. Or Grand Prix, but it's going to be 10 places improvement from Australia to Abu Dhabi, P5, what an amazing result from P10, and we can't be... Like Jeff said, we can't be disappointed about that, drive the day for us, thank, uh, thank the Lord, but I think Carlos Sainz deserves that. Well done, Carlos Sainz. Second victory of the season and in a row. So um, let's see if he can continue this form into the Australian GP. Um, McLaren do seem to be quite good at the moment. So, um, yeah, I won't be surprised if they keep that form into the next season. But um, going to the results now, I will be able to find out who else I jumped in that qualify in that pit lane um, fiasco. Um, probably lunch troll, but I can't remember. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's see. Um, lunch troll was 12th. Said Lando. What do you have to work on? Another clear win for um, hmm. to the title. Can't tell. Oh, don't really matter. Well, um, 10 instructors for us. 39 points the in the bag. We were comfortably clear of AlphaTauri. And, and although we didn't look like that at some points in the um, season. B12 in the drivers. Championship for us. Carlos Sainz with that victory moves up into sixth in the um, drivers. Sure but interviews now with, with Claire. Did you struggle to get through all that traffic today? Seems like a plane just went behind us. But um, compliment the aero. No secret about having a great team and car. Interesting result today. Would you say that you're happy with your performance? Um, well, yeah, I enjoyed myself out there today, obviously. It's one Grand Prix. Anything that you think gave you the edge over your rivals? Uh, my car. Yeah, we nailed re reliability, definitely. Great. Ignore that's central, everything. we've only done four upgrades to that. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, going up in claim now, halfway through level 10 of driver acclaim. And um, almost level 14 in the team acclaim. And um, we should be able to get that with the driver that um, we are going to get. Um, all the sponsor bonuses, which is quite cool. 
unfortunately, much uh, wasting the money. And um, yeah, we only get 13 million, but that will be enough to get one of the free drivers that I want. And um, yeah, now I am going to reveal who I want. Gonna go to the driver market, and it is going to be someone that's already been at Red Bull, uh, Red Bull uh, in the past two seasons. And it is the one and only Ah <laughs> AA Alex Albon. You look at Kimi Raikkonen and Sergio Perez and all that lot. But I'm going to take on board my favourite driver of Alexander Albon. Much better than Manchester City and almost everything actually. Um, better experience, racecraft and awareness so hopefully we can get him. Um, uh, ooh, bad. Damn, that's lucky. Um, vehicle performance, he wants ninth and or better and we got ninth. Driver auctions now. Um, we've got to try and outbid Red Bull because they're going to want to keep him, aren't they? We go for 6.12 and we then Red Bull get um, 6.22, we go for 6.32 under consideration, but then they go for 6.37, we go for 6.47 um, under consideration, and we have got Alexander Albon through for just under 6.5 million, which is nowhere near how much um, I want to spend. 9.47 million. Um, to actually get him because we had to buy him out of his contract. Activity timeline now. Um, got about what four days is that? So we're going to go for a simulator training and marketing strategy conference. Um, yep. Yeah. And then we've got four, five days here. So going to go for Sashi equipment upgrade and Aero team building. As so, oh no. Um, no, I think I do go with them. I just fancy to look at all the others. So, yeah. Uh, Princess interview soon with um, Will Buxton. So, um, hopefully, that can go well. Um, got a, quite a bit of money to spend. So, we're going to spend that on the fabrication for and um, Sashi. And, um, yeah, we've got quite a bit of um, R&D to spend. But we can't spend anywhere. Um, because we don't have enough for powertrain and durability and aerodynamics are um, got the um, regulation change and we've already got an upgrade coming for the Sashi and we don't have enough fabrication yet to get another one again all the stuff now Sashi fabrication spec one so we can get something for Sashi now uh, we can now get Thanks two so items for Sashi to your HQ. let's have a little chat about the team's performance this season your team's been picking up points fairly consistently. Do you think you'll be able to become a challenge to the top teams in the future? Um, that's our aim. It'll take time to get there. But, um, yeah. You can't build a championship winning car overnight. Oh, no. Have I just downgraded them? Oh, no. On driver development. Um, we learn a lot from each other, to be honest. I mean, I learned from Alex. He learns from me. Made a big splash at Toro Rosso and Red Bull. Do you see well, potential obviously. In him? Um, otherwise we won't get him. We're gonna give him enough room Do you see for him to shine. With your second driver being long term, or will you be looking for someone else if you're successful? Well, as long as they develop, we invest in our staff there. So well, as long as they show that, orders, we keep them. Your career comes first in your team. And the typical question is here, my teams and my rules, I mean, I think that's obvious. Well, it's been wonderful oh, Alex might be friendly now, I may have just threatened Alex to not beat me. Oh well, I am up in the AI next season and I okay. am getting rid of ASs. Got some money now so we'll we can upgrade the, the fabrication to the durability, which we are going to do. That should come at the end of February. Um, we're now going to have a look at getting a power up train, uh, power train upgrade. Um, we're going to go for magnetic compound major, I don't know, cylinder head major engine power, I'm pretty sure. 
I'm pretty sure of this one. This one. Don't think I go for fuel efficiency, but um, because I don't think we. Yep, power train engine power because I'm um, kind of lacking that a little bit. But the end of the season is now here. Uh, we don't have enough R and D. What am I doing? Oh, customization. What's this about? Oh, it's about that podium. Uh, it's about that emote that I got at the end of practice, isn't it? Uh, po pose. Um, Serenity? Maybe. I may do that for the British GP. But, end of the season now. And, um, yeah. Team Acclaim, we go all the way to halfway through level 11 claim. Alex does the same, but just over ha um, half of level 12 claim. We go to level 15 claim on the um, Team Acclaim. Um, Cash, we got 19 million because we got 7th and we completed a full season. So that's 19.76 million in the bank. And um, looking at the results now, 0 wins each, 0 position, pole positions each, but 30 point, 38 points for me, 145 points for him, 12th in the championship for me, 7th in the championship for him. Uh, that could be quite good. Um, unfortunately, I deleted footage of um, all the sponsors in that for next um thingy so um i'll explain all that in the australian gps episode for thursday which should be tomorrow based on when this comes out but until next time i've really enjoyed this season i can't wait to see what's going to happen next season i'm a most engineer Share your films and friends have common interests. Comment your thoughts in the description uh, in down in the comments below. But until next time, season two, end of season one, Overwatch engineer. I hope you enjoyed just as much as I have. Goodbye. I can't wait.